All right, here we are, crew call with the scooters, and we are with our friend and extremely talented Jeff Swenson, photographer extraordinaire. Thank, uh, you. thank you so much. And where are you, Jeff? Where are you right um, now? Right now, I'm in Oakmont in my house, okay. um, just getting ready to go to the Allegheny County Airport or the Pittsburgh International Airport to work on a story for Getty Images. Okay. Um, so just covering American Airlines is storing all their planes from across the country out out at the airport and they're working on all their planes um, while they have this downtime so that's a kind of a important story is it a coronavirus focused story is it actually talking about that or is it just American well Airlines? it's it's just another one of the uh, things that has happened obviously no planes very few planes are flying um, mm -hmm. And so American has decided to base a lot of their planes at Pittsburgh because they have a maintenance place there as well. So, Wow. Um, you were on assignment. So you're a I just want to let everybody yeah. know. Yeah. I don't know who you are. I don't know what they've been doing with their lives. But um, in terms of what you do, you're an incredible photographer. But you work for not only yourself, but you are a hired gun, if you will, aren't you, for all yeah. the I work for um, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, USA Today, um, Getty Images, which is a really large photo agency mm -hmm. that uh, um, puts my images in all sorts of newspapers and magazines around the world. And um, I work for everybody. Um, so um, usually I can figure out how to make a photograph from a lot of different things. But um, I'm a journalist um, emphasizing photography, obviously, but, um, and that helps me, all the other work that I do helps me out. Um, you know, I'm not an architecture photographer, but I photograph a lot of architecture and that in turn helps me photograph other things. And I do a lot of commercial work. Um, um, I shoot film, I, um, record sound. I, I'm a musician. I, I'm a writer. I write every week. Um, so I do a lot of different things. Um, it's a fun, it's a fun life. You're a Jeff of all trades. Forget I, Jack. You're Jeff. You're Jeff you of know, all trades. I actually always wished my mom had named me Jack. Yeah. Well, we're going to change it. As my sister's name is Jill. And, uh, you know, Jack just seems like a good name to go with that. That's but, cool. <laughs> So we're on the phone, we're talking to Jack or Jeff, whatever you want to go with today, we can go with that. Yeah. So how are you guys doing? Good. It's been crazy. I think um, on the other side of it, we've been watching a lot of our friends who are in freelance production and in production period, just everything stopping. Mm -hmm. But right. a month ago, we started really talking with our clients about what was happening um, in Asia. And we have a couple clients that are global and starting to write messaging and construct messaging. And so for the last three weeks, we've been doing a lot of strategy with the companies um, okay. and working pretty much around the clock. We've been- That's great. Yeah, it is. It's, it's been a lot. I think for us, it's that human, it's the human condition and it's, you know, you want to protect the company, you want to protect the people, you want to make sure the messaging is getting out there. But- I think right now it's just clear messaging, like what really is going on and, and how does that feel? Have you been experiencing, or I mean, you were covering a uh, Washington Post story before you. Yeah, I had a Washington Post story that ran on Sunday and I was down in West Virginia where most of the people were still in a state of disbelief about mm -hmm. um, everything that was going on. In fact, on my way home driving through, I was about three and a half hours away from Pittsburgh and driving through the night on this windy country road way up in the mountains and I came upon this church in the rain that was all aglow and I turned around um I now have a van that's equipped with a stove and a heater and a bed in there and everything so I can pretty much go everywhere and be mm -hmm. self-contained um and uh so I pulled into this church parking lot and I walked in and there were all these people um having a Bible study. Uh, they were all dressed in ties and coats and the women were all wearing hats and long dresses. And I, I, 
I thought I had stumbled onto a funeral, but in fact, it was a Bible study and uh, they invited me in. Um, I identified myself and they invited me in and, and their message was that they were not afraid to catch the virus because, um, you know, they'd been saved. Um, and they were anxious to shake my hand. And I had been photographing in hospitals that day. And I was like, well, you probably don't want to shake my hand. And they were like, well, we're not really afraid. Um, and I was like, well, it's all the other people that might catch it from you guys or you from, you know, I, I don't want anybody here to catch it from me. So every time I go out now um, and then come back to my family, it's a strange feeling of like, oh, uh, did I touch something? Um, were my hands on my camera and then they were touching things and then my, my camera was close to my face and how do I disinfect my camera? How do I make sure that I'm not carrying a virus? Um, I mean, it's all, it's, we're all very speculative right now on how everything mm -hmm. is going to how everything's going to go down. And um, if you've noticed the stock market has just been up and down and up and down and um, the information flow um, that we now see has gone off to sort of ideological viewpoints, which typically when you're looking at science and you're not unsure about it, you probably should just stick to the science and, and all that kind of stuff. So, but everybody is wondering what they should believe. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard to know exactly what you believe if you can't see what, what's going on. Um, what you can see out on the streets of Pittsburgh and throughout our communities is that, um, you know, people's eye, when you pass somebody, you don't necessarily look at them the same way. Um, which is very strange um, from my standpoint, because I'm a, kind of a greeter and a hugger. And um, mm -hmm. so that's, that's interesting. My 18 year old son really wants to go visit his girlfriend. Um, and he doesn't think it's fair that he should be sequestered. Um, there's a lot out there that everybody's got to take into account. I think that we're early on in this stage. And I think a lot of people are imagining that um, we're not. And so um, with regard to healthcare, with regard to economics, um, I think everybody's gonna start to rethink all sorts of ideas that they had about what society's supposed to be. So um, there's a lot of unemployed folks out there now. And mm -hmm. um, um, my friends and I uh, have an office down in the Strip District and we were wondering if we should keep it and um, it's my indication that a lot of people will be needing a space um, in the short term future um, because they've become unemployed. So that's a consideration to think about. And, um, you know, everything is who would have thunk this a month ago? I know, um, absolutely. Um, and perhaps maybe we should have. I, I think that when these things, I mean, I now know more about like, the genome of viruses than I ever did before. Um, so, you know, it's a brave new world. Um, and how it's gonna all pan out is anybody's best guess. And so as a journalist, I, I should be out there um, covering that as safely as possible, um, so. It's interesting that you said that you look at people on the streets differently. I noticed that you're, you know, you're, going out either really early after the time that you're allowed to go out to go to the grocery store or trying to get out and get exercise just to outside mm -hmm. and you people are looking at you like <laughs> you know right. are you going, i feel like it's like are you going to kill me <laughs> like right. That, right you have that much distance and i'm i know i'm a a product of that as as well because i think about that i'm like okay just stay over there i don't I don't want to be around a lot of people anyhow, <laughs> ever. So it's like, you know, just keep, keep the distance. I'm okay. I'm okay. I can wait. Right. Yeah, that, um, I mean, I have a really good friend that's pregnant now. Um, I can't imagine what she's thinking about. This is the first time she's ever been pregnant. So, 
Um, I have friends, you know, as, as a photographer, I think I lost, um, just in the, really the first two weeks, I probably lost $5,000 worth of work. Other work came in. Um, but I had some big assignments that, that got canceled. Um, so money is, you know, for me, it's not so bad, but I can only imagine a lot of people in a rough situation. Mm -hmm. Um, so people are going to start to scramble. Um, you know, every time you think you want to go to the grocery store, how, how is that going to go down? And, uh, you know, we're a social creature, um, all through this world where we interact in so many ways. If, if anything, this has shown us to be a very glo global, um, creature and perhaps we, um, should start thinking about that these days. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, I think that, uh, and not to be political, but I think that our politics needs to be very pragmatic when it comes to healthcare these days. Um, we need to definitely rethink it. Um, I just read that, you know, with all these people being laid off, they, they're losing their healthcare. So, mm -hmm. um, and it will be best to know who has been tested or who had it and, and, and all that kind of stuff, just so that we can go on from here. Otherwise we're suspicious of everybody that comes, even our family members, you yeah. know? So, um, you know, if my 18 year old son wants to go visit his girlfriend, now I have to think about like who she's been with just in the same room and where were all of them and where were, were all of them, that makes sense. And um, where were they all? And, um, <laughs> and, and everything like that. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's really amazing. It's really amazing. I've been able to read a lot. Um, certainly lots of home cooked meals together has been pretty great. Um, I'm winning with my oldest son, I'm winning uh, the chess tournament that continues to go on. Um, jigsaw puzzles have a new meaning. It's kind of a fun thing. Right. Um, what are you reading? What's, what are you reading now? Um, I'm reading a lot of magazine articles. Um, I each week I am part of a poetry songwriting game with a bunch of uh, songwriters, movie directors, poets from around uh, the United States. And so I've been reading a lot of Mary Oliver poems. Um, I, I've been reading so much. What, what am I, 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 just, I just read a citation of a guy who won the medal of honor, you know, for his fighting in Vietnam, but he's, he was wounded 18 times um, in Vietnam and still survived, but he's got the coronavirus now and he's stuck in a hospital. Um, so what am I reading? I read the Washington Post, the New York Times, um, the Atlantic. Um, I read, I, I actually read the Wall Street Journal. I read, try to read a full spectrum of everybody's viewpoints on things so that I can somehow maybe hone it all down to what essentially I want to believe. Um, right. I've been listening to amazing music um, perpetually. Um, I have a bunch of playlists that I put together and I send them to my friends. Uh, I've been playing my guitar religiously. I learned a new couple songs. Um, really into this guy, Gregory Allen Isakoff. Um, he's a great songwriter. <laughs> um, I've been running, walking my dog. Um, what else? How do you cover all of this and still maintain? Is it making sure that you have to break time to get your brain off of it? Because if you're out covering stuff, everything yeah all well, I was, right and i was to bring up the hospital portion the hospital assignment like how was that like going into that and seeing that like firsthand so here's a really funny thing um when you're inside your house and you've been inside your house for a few days and you're like okay i don't think i have it um i better stay inside then you view the outside as like really foreign and then when you get out there 
you tend to view it in an entirely different way. You're like, okay, I'm just going to be safe here. I'm not going to touch this. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to take my own food with me. Um, you know, the thing about the journalism aspect and photojournalism is you tend to think about what you're viewing right then and there. Um, when I was in the hospital, um, the people seemed to be very careful. Um, I would, they wanted me to sign in and the person had bare hands that was handing me a pen and I was thinking, oh, okay, well, did you clean that pen? Um, do you really want me to sign this? Or maybe I have a pen in my pocket, I'll sign with that, all that. So, you know, I've never looked at how we touch all these things and how close we are to people. So that's been really, but, and then I, I'll come back to my house and think, oh, I hope I didn't catch something. Right. So yeah, how do I think about all that? It's, you know, probably, a lot of a lot more of us are going to catch this um and i hope that as they say that the curve is really shallow um in the event that i would get sick or um in need extra help on the other hand you know i've also wondered like did i already have it um because i had a little bit of a cough and some achiness for about 10 days and I was thinking, maybe I had it. And so those are the things that run through my mind. Right. Um, I get up in the, like at 4.30 in the morning now, which is kind of cool, and start reading. Um, oh. Paying attention to the news a lot more. Um, you know, it's um, when I talk to people, like my family, we express our love for each other. Because, you know, you, you know you're, you never know how many days you have left, um, which is something probably we should all be thinking about all the time. We, we take a lot for granted, especially in this country. Um, so am I waxing philosophical enough for you guys? Yeah, I, I, no, it's great. I could listen all day. All day. No, same. Shall I get my guitar and play? No. <laughs> I think it'd be great. So um, have you, I mean, you're covering all of this. Has there been one kind of glimmer of hope or something that you're watching or seeing that's giving you joy that you're going, yeah, this is the way to do things. Don't I do think that what we are doing right here, talking about these things, um, I think that the whole world, definitely in the United States, probably needed an extended vacation. Um, I think uh, one of the the, the glimmers of hope that I've seen is so many people that were rushing around all the time. We were never able to keep up with all the messages and everything. I think everybody has slowed down a little bit and they're appreciating a lot of things um, that they may have taken for granted before. I'm witnessing a lot of my friends um, become less busy and more sentimental about the simplest little things. So um, that, I, I believe that that is an amazing thing. Mm, I love that. I and, love I, and I hope, <clears throat> I hope that moving forward, we continue that, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, I've traveled throughout the world and you go to Europe in, in August and the whole place is shut down. You're like, how do these people survive taking a month vacation? Well, I think we're all finding out that, oh geez, um, it's really good maybe to put um, a little perspective on things and, and turn off the systems for a while. So, um, I mean, why do we work so hard anyway? You know, but right. I mean, I love, I love what I do, so I don't mind working. It's like vacation anyway. Yeah. I know. And you're very good at it. Yes. Incredibly talented. I'm only as good as what I do today. So <laughs> That's what we I may take like very bad pictures that. today and I, I'm very hopeful that I won't. Um, take bad I'm, pictures today. Sure I've already imagined awesome. like all the pictures I want that I probably won't get, but I'm hopeful. So. Well, I hope you have an amazing yeah. shoot and we appreciate you so much. And thank you so much for just yes. your thinking and your, pro I could listen to you all day. No, <laughs> stop. Yeah. Um, thank you guys so much. Um, and keep, keep rolling and keep smiling. And, um, 
let's knock on wood and I hope we can do lots of great work in the future. All right. Peace be with you. Bye. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Uh -huh.